and this video is on adding and subtracting fractions and mixed numbers. So first part of getting your notes ready is make sure you add this essential question. How do the rules for adding integers affect how I add or subtract fractions? So first thing we're going to do is review our integer rules. So this is the part you need to fill into your notes for me. Remember for adding integers, if they have the same signs, you're going to add them together and keep the signs. Same signs, add and keep. If the integers have different signs, so one's positive and one's negative, we're going to subtract them and take the sign of the higher number. Which team wins, the positives or the negatives? For subtracting, remember our phrase, adding the opposite. We're going to change the subtraction to addition and then change the next number to its opposite. So Subtraction becomes addition, and the very next number becomes the opposite. If it was positive, it's negative. If it's negative, it's positive. But make sure those are written down in your notes. And then here's the part that applies to fractions. For fractions, think of the numerator as the part that is either positive or negative. So a lot of times you're going to see a negative in front of a fraction. I want you to just think of that negative as going with the numerator, because that's the part that's actually going to be doing some work in these calculations for us. Now let's review our adding and subtracting rules. So for fractions, number one is rewrite the fraction with the common denominator. Remember to treat your numerator and denominator the same. So whatever I do to the numerator, I have, or sorry, the denominator, I have to do the same thing to my numerator. Then we're gonna follow our integer rules in order to add or subtract. And then like any good fraction, you're always gonna simplify your answer. So let's see that in action here. Five, six minus three fourths. First step is finding a common denominator. And in this case, 12 is a good common denominator. It's something both four and six can turn into. Then we have to change the numerators. Well, to get from six to 12, I multiplied times two. So I do the same thing on top and I get 10. To get from four to 12, I multiplied times three. So I do the same thing up top. Three times three is nine. And then it was a subtraction problem. So this is where I'm gonna give you a little bit of leeway. When you have subtraction, if it looks like a problem that you could just subtract like you normally would even before we learned integers, I'm okay with you leaving it as subtraction. If you prefer to change it to adding the opposite right away just to be consistent, I'm totally fine with that because you're going to get the same answer. But either way, 10 plus negative 9 or 10 minus 9, in this case the positives are going to win, 10 minus 9 is 1, and I get an answer of 1 12. 1 and 12 can't be simplified any farther, so I'm good. Next one, negative 3 eighths plus 7 tenths. So you'll notice that one of my prob numbers is negative. So I'm going to think of that negative as going with the 3, since it's the numerators that actually do the work. Here i got to find a common denominator for eights and tens. Some of you, your first instinct, oh, sorry, I didn't mean to write the same fraction, same denominators again. Some of you, your first instinct is going to be to go with 80, just multiplying your denominators together. That's fine. But a smaller one would be 40. But a good place to check is your multiplication table. Look at the eights, look at the tens. What number shows up in both of those rows? In this case, 40 is the first one. To get from eight to 40, I multiplied times five. So I'm gonna do the same thing up top. And I get negative 15. Remember the negative just tags along. To get from 10 to 40, I multiplied times four. So I'm gonna do the same thing here. And that gives me 28. Now I'm ready to use my integer rules. I have a positive and a negative, so they have different signs. So I'm gonna subtract them. 28 minus 15 is 13. Denominator stays the same. And then I take the sign of the bigger number. The positive was bigger, so my answer is gonna stay positive. In this case, I didn't have to simplify again either. Next one. Notice how we have subtracting a negative. I don't care what kind of a problem we're doing. If you see subtracting a negative, let's get rid of it. So instead of subtracting, we add and we make it the opposite. So this really became 45 plus 37. We didn't even have to worry about those negatives. Now we need a common denominator. In this case, the only thing five and seven can turn into is 35. We can just multiply them together. That's always your backup if you can't figure out anything else, so just multiply the two denominators together. 5 times 7 got me to 35, so I do the same thing up top. It gives me 28. 7 times 5 got me to 35, so I do the same thing up top. and get 15. Remember, we changed it to adding a positive, so it's really just an addition problem. 
28 plus 15 is 43 30 fifths. In this case, I can't simplify it, but it is an improper fraction. So I want to change it into a mixed number. 35 goes into 43 one time. And if I took 35 away from 43, I would have 8 left over. So 1 and 8 30 fifths. So let's do mixed numbers. So for a mixed number, you're going to rewrite the fractions that have a common denominator, then add or subtract the fraction portion, then add or subtract the whole number part, and then put the two parts back together. So make sure you get those four steps into your notes. So let's see this in action. First, focus on the fraction part, fifths and thirds. So a good common denominator is going to be 15. To get from 5 to 15, I multiply times 3, so do the same thing up top, and give me 6. To get from 3, I would multiply times 5 to get to 15, so do the same thing up top. Once I have those common denominators, I can go ahead and add them together. That gives me 11 fifteenths. I can't simplify, so I'm okay there, but then don't forget to go back and do step 3. Add the whole number. 7 plus 3 is 10. 10 and 11 fifteenths. So it's really just a fraction problem with a little basic addition problem to go with it. So last two. And as always, you're welcome to work on these on your own if you feel like you've got them down and then just check your answers with me, but make sure you've got your work to back up your answer. Here, because I see one of my numbers is a negative, I definitely don't want subtraction in it. So I am gonna go in my head and make this adding the opposite. That negative is gonna go with both the whole number and the fraction part when we deal with them. So in this case, they're both negative, so same signs, we're just going to add them together. 4 ninths and 5 sixths, a good common denominator is 18. To get from 9 to 18, I multiply times 2, so I do the same thing up top. To get from 6 to 18, I multiply times 3, so I do the same thing to my numerator. Remember, treat both parts equally. And for some people, they just like to add the whole number piece right in there, so that way you keep it all together. That's fine, or you can do them separately. 18 and 15, again, they're both negative, so we're going to keep the signs. 18 and 15 is 23 eighteenths. 2 and 5 is 7, and it's going to stay negative. Okay, So you, if it helps, if you want to write a little negative on your fractions during the problem, that's fine. But when we're done, we just put one negative in front of the answer. But 23 eighteenths isn't quite finished. It's an improper fraction. 18 goes into 23 one time with 5 left over. Plus the 7 is 8 and 5 eighteenths. And then the negative just stays on it. So it was really just one giant negative fraction. We just had to do all the work in between. So you don't have to worry about switching back and forth between positives and negatives. It just stays negative all the way through to the end. All right, up here, I see subtracting a negative. We never want that, so I make it adding the opposite. So in this case, adding a positive. Here, you're going to see that I have different signs, so I know I'm really going to have to subtract them. So this is where we have to be careful as we're working our way through it. First is the fractions. Find our common denominator, 20 and 20, because that works for both 4s and 5s. Multiply times 5 to get 20, so I'll do the same thing up top. Multiply times 4 to get 20, so I'll do the same thing up top. And then I had a negative 9 and a positive 7. So same signs, add and keep, different signs, subtract. So I'm going to subtract the whole numbers and the fractions. In this case, my negative is bigger. Negative 9 is bigger than 7, so I know I'm going to get a negative. 9 minus 7 is 2. 15 twentieths minus 8 twentieths is going to be 7 twentieths. And the whole thing stays negative. All right, now it's your turn to give it a try.